Hey friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to Rowan Co. Farms. Welcome to the Homestead Kitchen. We are going to be talking sourdough today. I'm really excited to be participating in a collaboration by my friend Anna at the Fermented Homestead. Uh, she has got a whole group of wonderful collaborators together. And we are bringing you all things sourdough for the entire month of September. So every day someone will be posting a new video with a sourdough recipe showing you how they are creating a new sourdough creation. <laughs> I'm really excited because although I've done sourdough for years, I haven't delved into a lot of different recipes. My main thing is just a sourdough bowl, a round loaf of bread, that beautiful loaf that you always see in all the pictures. That's what I'm going to show you how to make today. And I hope you guys are as excited as I am. So for the past few years, I have been gluten-free, trying to heal my gut from some different issues. And so I just recently revived my sourdough starter again. It's right here. I haven't named her yet. I want to give her a name and I want you guys to help me give her a name. I'm saying her, but I'm pretty sure she's a her. But anyway, so we've revived our sourdough starter and we're going to get her going today for a beautiful sourdough loaf of bread. I'm not going to explain how to start a, sta a sourdough starter today. We're going to be starting with a fed starter for this recipe. All right, guys, so let's talk about sourdough just a little bit. Um, I don't want to scare you. This is the recipe everybody wants. You know, you want to be able to make that beautiful sourdough loaf of bread. And there's so many different recipes out there. There's so many different techniques. And I've just kind of used a little bit of everything that I found along the way and I haven't really created my own recipe, but you'll find that there's just a lot of different techniques and timings that people use when they make their sourdough. I tend to start my, um, I feed my sourdough in the morning. And then if I want to make a recipe with it, I will start making the dough later in the afternoon or evening. And then usually by the next day, the fermentation process is finished and you can bake your item the following day. So basically it's late afternoon now. We're gonna get our dough started so that we can bake sourdough tomorrow morning. We're going to need for this recipe, we're gonna be using an active sourdough starter. There's lots of recipes out there on how to get your sourdough starter going. There's places you can buy sourdough starters, lots of different ways to do it. Check them out and get your sourdough starter going. It takes about seven to 10 days to get it really bubbly and active but we're gonna be using one that is already fed and ready to go today. We're also gonna need some salt, some water, and some flour. People use all different combinations of flour for their recipe, but for the sake of, of ease, we are using unbleached all-purpose flour. With, uh, it's also organic. That doesn't matter, you don't have to have it be organic, but mine is, but unbleached all-purpose flour is I think a standard way to go and it makes a great loaf of bread. So here's what we're gonna start with. We're going to start by mixing up the sourdough starter, the water and the salt. And we're gonna get those all in our bowl and get them combined really well because it's easier to combine them first than to try to add them into the wet sticky dough later. So we're going to use a scale here. I never do sourdough without measuring in grams. There's too many variations when you use cups and teaspoons and, and that kind of measurement. And so I never do it that way. Everything is done with a scale and is done in grams so that you can get the exact amount of flour, water, and salt that you need. Uh, and starter as well, of course. So we're gonna measure all those things out. We're going to be using 300 grams of water. And we're weighing the water, guys. We're not measuring the water. We are weighing the water. We're, at, we're toggling between 299 and 301, so I'll take that. Um, as long as you're just within one or two grams, guys, that's fine. You just don't wanna be off by 20 or 30 grams. And sometimes when you use cup measurements, things can be really off. And so that can make your bread really inconsistent when you're making it. So next, we're going to be using 100 grams of our sourdough starter. Let me show you what this looks like, guys. This is thick, thick pancake batter, okay? 
let me get close so you can really see what this looks like. It's really bubbly and active. And we need 100 grams of this, so we're going to be zeroing this out. There we go. We're going to very slowly add in a little bit at a time so we don't put too much. So we're going to set our starter aside there, and now we need 10 grams of salt. We'll zero out one more time. And just gently in add our salt in so we make sure we're able to measure the amount. Okay. So then we're just going to stir these ingredients together. I have my dough whisk and I'm just going to gently, gently combine all these ingredients together. And this will make it a lot easier when we combine the dough into our bowl. So I think the best thing to remember about making one of these loaves is that it's pretty hands off most of the time. You're going to, you're going to need to be around the dough for a couple of hours after you make it, but you don't have to work with it for two hours. You have to come back to it periodically, like every 30 minutes and just do some short series of stretches and folds to the dough. Okay, so we've got all that combined together. Let me go get a bowl and we're going to measure out our flour next. Okay, all right guys, so I've got a bowl here. Um, I'm not using a metal bowl, I'm using a, a ceramic bowl. Um, some people use um, plastic or glass, that's fine too. You generally want to stay away from metal because um, the ferment reacts to metal in a, in a negative way. And so we want to avoid that if we can. All right, so let's place our bowl here on the scale. We want to zero that out. We're gonna be adding 400 grams of our unbleached organic all-purpose flour. All right, we're almost there. We are at 357. All right, there we go. We are at 401. So now we're going to combine this mixture into our flour. Okay, so let's combine our wet and dry ingredients together. I'm using my dough hook just to give this a good quick combine. And this is going to just be a really sticky ball when it first comes together. We're not going to do a whole lot to it. We're just going to try to bring all of our ingredients together. I really like using the dough hook, um, I'm sorry, the, the dough whisk because it, it kind of works right through the dough because it's hollow in the middle, not like a regular whisk where everything gets stuck. And we just want to make sure we incorporate everything together and there's no more little dry bits of flour. And that, that looks pretty good to start. This is what we want our dough to look like. It's a shaggy, loose, sticky dough. And we're gonna leave it alone just like that for 30 minutes. So this timing of 30 minutes while we're letting the dough rest is just to let the water and the flour really absorb with each other it takes a little while for some flowers to absorb moisture. And so the consistency of the dough is going to change a little bit during this 30 minute time frame. All right guys, so you can see that we've let our dough rest and it has changed and relaxed a little bit and it has absorbed as much as it's going to absorb of the flour. 
So now we're going to sprinkle a little bit more flour on top of here because this still looks like a really, really sticky dough. Actually, we may not need to. So what we're gonna do now, no, we do need to sprinkle it a little bit. Just gonna sprinkle a little bit of dough on top, I'm a flour on top here, just to help me work with this a little bit. And I'm just gonna gently start to take and stretch the dough and fold it over. And we're gonna turn, do the same thing again. I'm gonna stretch the dough and fold it over. Turn again, stretch the dough, and fold it over. Same thing again. You're going to do that a few times. You're going to reform another ball there. So now that we've done that, we've done a, a few stretches and folds. We're gonna let our dough rest again for another 30 minutes. I like to keep mine covered with this beeswax wax wrap. You can also use some saran wrap as well. And we'll come back in 30 minutes and we'll do that again. So you can see here, our dough changes every time we have a rest period and we've stretched and folded it. We're gonna go ahead and add a little sprinkle of flour on top here because it's still very sticky but we're gonna do so very, very minimally. We don't wanna to add too much flour here. One thing to note is that if you don't need flour, don't add it. If you're able to fold and stretch your dough and it's not sticky, you don't need to add more flour. So we're gonna go ahead and do some more stretches and folds on our dough, and then we're gonna let it rest again for 30 minutes. So my dough is still pretty sticky to the touch, so I'm going to sprinkle just a tiny bit more flour on top before we rest it again. So I just wanted to show you kind of what the dough feels like. It's kind of springy. It bounces back a little bit and it's starting to become very soft. It's a really nice dough to work with right now. So you can see how the dough really changes every time that we do a stretch and fold. The consistency changes a little bit. It looks like we don't need to add any more flour. It's pretty good. We're just going to continue to stretch and fold. No kneading is required. It is still really sticky. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more flour just on top, just a tiny bit. So we're not trying to change the hydration of the dough. We just wanna take that last little bit of excess moisture off. The dough is very soft. It's very springy, it's starting to get some elasticity to it. Um, I'm liking the way the dough feels. So 
We're gonna let that rest one more time. We'll do one more stretch and fold, and then we'll shape it, and we're going to put it into the refrigerator. Okay, guys, so we've done multiple stretches and folds on our dough, and now we're going to go ahead and shape it into our loaf or our bowl. So I'm gonna turn this out onto a nice flat surface. Um, I'm, I have a quartz countertop here. If, if you need to, you can lightly flour the surface. I'm gonna wait to do that until I start to uh, handle the dough a little bit and see if I need to do that. Resist the urge to over flour. Everyone, you always hear that you have to put a lot of flour and sometimes you don't need any at all. Uh, so we're just going to gently work with the dough. If I notice, see how it's really sticky there? I may do a little bit of flour, but we're going to gently fold the dough just like we've been doing, but we're going to make it a little bit neater this time. Go all the way around. Tucking as we go. One more time here. Tucking as we go. Okay. Okay, so it's a little sticky. That's okay. So now that we've been tucking this dough under, yeah. So I'm going to flour my fingertips just a little bit, but I'm not going to flour this whole dough, okay? Just the tips of my fingers a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to shape the loaf. We're going to turn it with our hands, and as we do that, we're going to kind of twist a little bit, and we want to tuck a little bit as we go, okay? But again, don't over flour because you don't want the bottom to it'll get really weird. <laughs> just trust me on that. Uh, so we're just going to slowly start to kind of turn it like this and you'll start to feel the dough change a little bit and it won't stick. Mine's very smooth. It's turning very easily. Okay, that's great. And then we're going to turn this out. I'm going to use a banneton basket, which is very, uh, it's got flour inside it. If you don't have this, that's okay. Use a bowl lined with a towel, a tea towel, and then just flour that tea towel just a little bit so that the dough doesn't stick to it. So we're gonna take our loaf that we just shaped, we're gonna turn it upside down, and we're gonna put it into that, that basket or bowl, just like that. That's your loaf. You are not going to handle this loaf anymore. No more stretches and folds, no kneading, nothing. This is when we're going to start letting our dough really rise. Now I'm gonna let this sit at room temperature on my kitchen counter until I get ready to go to bed. Once I go to bed, or right before I go to bed, I'm going to cover this with my uh, beeswax cloth over there, or you can cover it with some saran wrap and then I'm gonna put this into the refrigerator to rise overnight and to ferment overnight. Uh, the idea with that is we wanna slow the fermentation down. We don't want it to rise too quickly and then fall flat before we get a chance to bake it. So what we're gonna do, let this rise for a little bit longer. It's not like regular yeast, guys. It's not going to just double in size like you hear all the time. It's going to continue to rise slowly. But when we put this in the oven tomorrow, that's when the sourdough is going to do its magic. That's when all the air and the bubbles are going to come through. So all that stretching and folding that we did has helped incorporate air into this dough the whole time. When you knead it, you push all the air out. That's why we're not kneading this dough. We wanna keep all the air in there because sourdough has nice big holes in it. Okay guys, just a few things to think about uh, when you're doing your sourdough bread. The temperature of your home can affect the rise of your dough significantly. So the cooler it is in your house, the slower the fermentation and the rise will happen. And the warmer it is, the quicker it's gonna happen. Um, right now, it's fairly cool in my house, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this in my oven with the light on. No temperature, just the light. 
the light provides just a tiny, tiny amount of heat above what is currently in my house, um, but doesn't put off any excess heat. So I'm just gonna let it sit in the oven for a couple hours before I go to bed, and then we'll put this into the refrigerator. So guys, while we're waiting for our bread to rise and put it in the refrigerator, I wanted to talk to you about maintaining your sourdough starter. So I've had my sourdough starter since January of 2019. Starters can go through dormant periods where you keep them in the refrigerator if you're not using them. I went for a year and a half where I was not consuming any gluten at all. And so this sourdough starter, it stayed in the refrigerator. I took it out every few weeks and I'd feed it a little bit just to make sure it stayed happy and healthy. But I really don't have to use it if I don't want to use it. So if you're getting tired of making bread or other um, treats and things that you're using your sourdough starter for, just take a break. Feed it put it in your refrigerator and just leave it alone for a few weeks and then take it out when you're ready to make something again. When you are when you take it out, let it sit at room temperature, um, and I'm sorry, and set it out until it gets to room temperature and then you can start adding and feeding again and you can just watch it and as it gets active again, you can start using it just like you normally would. So when you, when you feed a sourdough starter, I know you guys have probably heard a lot about discard and how much you need to feed again. So in my sourdough starter here, in this quart jar, I usually try to keep it at about half full. I don't go more than that. I usually never need more sourdough starter than that for any recipe. Um, and so what you do when you get ready to feed your starter, if you haven't used any and it's this full, I don't want to add more flour in here and then it bubble up and rise over. So I'm going to either dump half of this out and not use it. You can throw it away if you want. You can feed it to your chickens. You can use it for another easy recipe, a discard recipe. You can stick it into your refrigerator and use it for something else. But the idea is, is that you don't want to constantly have to feed more and more and more flour to your starter because you have to feed the amount of flour that you have in here, you have to add that back in again. So if you have a large amount of flour, you're gonna have to feed it a large amount of flour to keep it going again. If you keep it small, you only have to feed it small amounts to keep it active. And that saves you on flour. You don't wanna just overuse flour, especially if you're buying a good flour, like an organic, unbleached, all-purpose. Like that's expensive and sometimes it's hard to find. And so you don't wanna just waste it on feeding useless amounts of starter that you're not going to use. Now, if you're using the starter, then by all means do that, do it in a bigger vessel than what I'm doing here. But I have found that this is the most that I ever use. If I'm making one or two loaves of bread a week, this is plenty. You don't need more than that. So when you're feeding, discard half, discard half. And then you're gonna feed, you know, a small amount. So generally, if I have about a cup of starter in here, I'm gonna feed it between a half and a cup of flour. And then I'm gonna add filtered water and stir it until it gets to a really nice thick consistency. I don't like mine to be very thin. I like mine to be really, really thick, like I showed you guys earlier. So that's how I maintain my starter. If you add excess amounts of flour, you're going to have to feed lots of extra flour. So just keep that in mind. The bigger your starter, the more you have to feed it. So that's okay if you wanna have just massive amounts of starter, but generally speaking, you don't need that. You only need a little bit. So just think about maintaining a small amount. And some people even maintain less. So you can do that as well. All right, guys, I hope that helped you out a little bit on maintaining, maintaining a sourdough starter and helps you get started. Uh, sourdough can be tricky sometimes and it can sound really difficult, but it's really not as difficult as it seems. <laughs> so I hope this helped you guys a little bit and I hope that the rest of our sourdough making tutorial will help you guys as well. So stick around for the rest. All right guys, so we're ready to take this and put it into the refrigerator overnight. You'll notice that it hasn't risen a whole lot and that's okay. This is a slow rise, a slow fermentation. We're going to see all of the bubbles and the rise happen tomorrow when it goes into the oven. 
So let's get it in the fridge. We can cover it with our wrap or with some saran wrap. But either way, we wanna make sure we keep the moisture in. We don't wanna have too much of a skin forming on this uh, loaf here. All right, guys, so we have taken our bread dough out of the oven, I'm sorry, out of the refrigerator this morning. You can see it hasn't risen a whole lot, but that's okay. We're gonna leave it sitting on the counter for a little while, and we're gonna go ahead and get our Dutch oven into our oven for preheating. You wanna turn your oven as high as it will go. Mine will go to 500, so we're gonna put that in there. Put your Dutch oven in there empty with the lid on. So while we're waiting for our oven to heat up, that's gonna take a little while. We're just gonna let this rest on the counter and continue to rise. It may get a little bit bigger now that it's out at room temperature. Okay, so it's been another couple of hours since we took the uh, dough out of the refrigerator. We're gonna be using a piece of parchment paper and we're gonna take and turn our bread dough over onto the parchment. Sometimes it takes a little coaxing to get it out. Yep, a little more coaxing. <laughs> Is it coming out? Yeah. There it goes, oh goodness, okay slide it over a little bit. Oh, I don't think it's going to slide. I put it in the wrong place. I got to get it up. Oh, no. Okay, y'all. Not ideal. Not ideal, but that's okay. I don't want to mess with it much more. I'm afraid I'm going to completely deflate it. So, we're going to take this and we're going to put this whole thing into our Dutch oven. Harper likes it. Harper likes bread? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Duh, so we've preheated our Dutch oven. You can see it's super hot. I'm gonna set the lid to the side. And we're gonna take our whole loaf here. We're gonna set it right down into our hot pan. Just like that. Before I put it into the oven, I'm going to give it a quick cut with the blade here just to make sure that it has a place to open up. I should have done that before I put it into the pot here, but that should be enough to let steam escape. And then we're going to put that into our oven with the lid on. So you're going to bake your bread at 500 degrees with the lid on for about 25 minutes, then take the lid off and bake for an additional 25 to 30 minutes. It's been 25 minutes, and so we're going to remove our lid. And you can see that the bread has really risen in there. It's a nice shape. It has split open a little bit, but that's okay. It looks great. And we're gonna put this back into the oven so it can continue to brown and form a crust on top. So let's take a look at our finished loaf. Wow, looks really good. I'm gonna lift it out with the parchment paper and set it on a cooling rack. So our loaf looks pretty good. It did not rise as much as I wanted it to. I'm not really sure what happened with that. Um, but the bread is still going to be really delicious to eat. Um, resist the urge to cut into the warm bread. You really want it to completely, completely cool before you cut into it. So we can see the bottom is done. It sounds nice and hollow. Uh, we're just going to wait to cut into it. So. Hang out for a little bit longer, guys, and we're gonna get this bread cut open, and I'll show you how we can get it cut into slices really easily as well. Okay. 
All right, guys, so our loaf is cooled off. Let's go ahead and cut into it and see how it looks. Look at that. It looks pretty good. It's got a, quite a few holes in it. It's a little denser than I probably would have liked, but it's still very spongy and soft. I wish it would have gotten a little bit more rise on it. I'm not sure what happened, but it still looks really, really good. So generally what I like to do when I'm cutting my loaf of bread, instead of cutting slices this way, I like to take my loaf flip it on its side and cut this way. It really helps to stabilize the bread and you get really nice slices. Even though they're a little bit smaller, you're still able to cut really nicely and get a nice piece. Yeah, the texture is really good. It's really soft. Mmm, tastes great. So as you can see, making sourdough is definitely an experiment with science. Different conditions like temperature, humidity, and weather can definitely play a role in how your bread turns out. And this time we didn't have as much rise as we would have liked, but the bread is still really delicious and it's definitely something we're going to be eating tonight for dinner. I think BLTs are in our future. So don't be discouraged. Even if your loaf is a little dense like mine was today, you're still going to make it again and it's going to get better every time you do it. It's still a great edible loaf of bread. I hope this gave you guys a little bit of encouragement to try your own sourdough bowl. All right, guys, so let's talk about our loaf of bread that we have here. It didn't turn out exactly like we thought it would. We would love to have a little bit better rise. And so I've been thinking about what could have happened this time with our loaf. We definitely didn't get a lot of rise in our dough, and we saw that when we took it out of the refrigerator. And so we could have let it rise a little bit longer on the counter to see if that would have helped a little bit. Uh, we could have left it out overnight to rise. That could have helped a little bit. It was definitely a little bit cooler in my house uh, over the last few days than it has been over the summer. And so that definitely helped with the lessening of the rise that we got. The bread still tastes really, really good. We're going to eat it, even though it's not as, as puffy as we would have wanted it to be. We still have a really great crust and a nice crumb, and we're going to enjoy it a lot. I've already started another loaf here. I've been working with einkorn flour a little bit. And so I've got a loaf of einkorn uh, sourdough in here. So we're gonna be attempting that uh, to see if it turns out. And if it does, I'll be bringing that to you guys as well. So stick around, it's all an experiment. We're constantly trying again and again. And I hope that encourages you guys to try your, your loaves of bread and your cinnamon rolls and your tortillas and all the things that you're going to be trying to make this month after you see all of the recipes out there. Just keep trying. Uh, sourdough is tricky and you just have to know that there are variables that sometimes are out of your hands and you can't do anything about it. But generally you will still end up with something edible in the end. So just keep doing it and eventually you'll get it figured out. I hope you guys are enjoying the collaboration Fall into Sourdough. Anna is a great friend of mine, and she has done a wonderful job of putting together a wonderful collaboration this month. So I'm going to leave a link down below to the playlist of all the other channels that are going to be participating. Go check out everything that's going on. You're going to see lots and lots of great recipes this month. Uh, Anna is also doing a giveaway on the last day of the month. She's going to be giving away a great little sourdough kit with all kinds of little goodies in there uh, to get you started on baking your own loaves of bread and just getting great at sourdough. So if you want to register for the giveaway, 
make sure you're watching all of the videos, leaving comments on all of the videos, asking questions, sharing your recipes. We want to hear from you. So your comment is your entry. So you must comment on the videos in order to be entered. And then on the last day, Anna is going to do a, a random drawing from all of those different comments. So if you guys want to be in on that, make sure you comment. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this was your first time to my channel, I hope you'll come back again. We are flower farmers, homesteaders, and homemakers here, and we are excited to share that with you guys. If you want to see more content like that, hit that subscribe button right there, and I can't wait to see you guys next time here at Rowan Co. Farms.